Good day. Good day, beloved, and welcome to Mental Health and You. I'm your host, Cynthia Timms. Today's guests, my guests today are bringing the power and passion of storytelling to communities of color, to underserved communities, and transforming lives. They're bringing the good light, if you will. Mm -hmm. They're bringing hope, if you will. Now, how are they doing it through storytelling? Thank you for asking. We're about to find out. Because I know as a storyteller and as an artist myself how much it has meant to me. And it, it has to mean so much to so many others. Be that as it may, I want to introduce to you my guests. Without further ado, first Miss uh, Paula Ralph Burkett, spoken word artist and writer, the winner, the recipient of so many awards, and a playwright now. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so thank you for being a part and your wonderful storytelling. We're going to talk about that absolutely and what it has meant. Okay, thanks for having me. Thank you for <laughs> being here. And also, thank you, Ms. Caroline, Carolyn E. Harrison, mm -hmm. the executive producer and founder of Good Light Productions. Yes, sir. Since 1993, I'm told. Yes, indeed. Yes, so you've been bringing the good light to underserved communities in the Bronx and beyond. That's correct. And the art of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Storytelling, story yes. And live theater. And live theater. Mm -hmm. Now let's get right to it. I talked about it. I, I teased the audience. I sort of talked how it's meant to how it's meant to me. What is meant to me? What has it meant to you? And why why Miss Harrison? Is it all right? I call you is it Carolyn? You call me Carolyn. Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cynthia. Good light productions. What is that? Good Light uh, Productions was birthed out of a need to create opportunities for myself. Mm -hmm. As a young woman of color, I began my career in theater as an actor and then a director, but there weren't very many opportunities yes. for women who look like me. And so I had a teacher in high school who said, when you go to the places you will go, mm -hmm. if you arrive and there is no work for you, create it. Yes. And that has been my mantra for the last 35 years. I spent 25 of that teaching young people how to take place, take their space up on the stage to learn what their voices sounded like and to share their own stories. And then most recently, Good Light Productions was born. I birthed it in 1993 after the birth of my first child mm -hmm. to create access for other people of color, people like Paula uh, and others and so for the last five years we've been creating access um, and stages and opportunities for people to tell stories that are their stories and as we believe as people tell their own stories others will be healed yes. and excited. Well it's good to hear mm -hmm. I know about that healing process mm -hmm. I'm a witness to that I think we talked a little bit about the, some of your influences, mm -hmm. you know, like Nikki Giovanni. Yes, indeed. I know back in the day, I, I remember listening to people like Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. yeah. Nikki, mm -hmm. and Sonia Sanchez. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Women and who look like me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Telling you their know? story, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Telling their story. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it spoke to me and it resonated with me in such a way. Oh, made me realize I'm not alone. That's right. Somebody. Somebody feels and hears my pain. Somebody right. hears my joy That's right. That's right. in the way I'm doing it. That's right. In the way I feel it. Mm -hmm. Somebody looks like me, mm -hmm. got my hair, got my skin. <laughs> That's right. You know, got <laughs> my eyes. Right. 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 I'm not alone. That's mm -hmm. right. And I think that's such that's part of the beauty of a spoken word. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's part of the power of the arts. Yes. Is it opens up a door to someone else's world that you would not necessarily see or even a world that you think you're in by yourself. You can see a character that has the same feelings like just like you were saying has the same feelings, has the same mm -hmm. um uh, struggles as you do and you realize that you're not in this world by yourself so art has a power of empathy mm -hmm. but also the power of uh, self-reflection that you're able to see yourself as valuable mm -hmm. that's why I I, mm -hmm. I uh, was able to connect with Cynthia we I'm, say, I'm sorry Carolyn, <laughs> Carolyn <and Cynthia. laughs> um, we met at uh, the Bronx cultural arts um, um, what was, it was a meeting uh, for NISCA funded, NISCA funded uh, right. the artist's entrepreneur, which That's is right. where Paula and I okay. got to know each That's other. That's right. Yeah. And we connected so because uh, her dedication to 
tell stories that people would not necessarily see on Broadway stage or not mm -hmm. see even on an off-Broadway stage, but people actually need to see in order to be valued, to understand that they are mm -hmm. valued. Um, I think that's why we, definitely why we connected. Mm -hmm. And that's the power that we bring. That's the power of the arts within not just us, but in everyone. So if you recognize that power in someone, in, in someone on the stage, you must understand that you too have that there same power, that's it. that you too have that same connection, that you too have that same value. Yes. You um, know, in a couple minutes, ladies, we, we're going to let you do your thing here. <laughs> yes. But in those two minutes before we set up so y'all can uh, do what you do, right. you know, you recently had a playwriting series at the Lit Bar. Yes, that's right. Where that's right. you did an excerpt mm -hmm. of one of your plays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why was that necessary? What, what, what did you get out of that? Well, you know, my piece is called a Black American Working Woman, and it's n about a woman who is, you know, fighting to overcome the barriers in her mind, you mm -hmm. know, to leave the plantation in her mind. And to have it, to be able to read it at the Lit Bar that is owned by a black woman, mm -hmm. that most of the people in the audience yes. were black women. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. that, that was, that was mm -hmm. powerful and uh, important and just beautiful mm -hmm. to be in. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Yeah, no, the collaboration with uh, the Lit Bar has really encouraged us so much because like Good Light Productions, they too are creating spaces, avenues of mm -hmm. uh, place, gathering places, you know. Right. Back in the day, black and brown people gathered in bars or um, by the pool mm -hmm. or at That's the right. laundry, right, to tell stories, to encourage one another. The Lit Bar is creating that place and encouraging us to continue reading regardless of the ways uh, reading spaces are being eliminated. Mm -hmm. The library funding is being right. shut down. There's no longer a Barnes and Noble. And this sister has decided that- At least in the Bronx. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. Right. Uh, she has decided, no, we are readers. That's right. And uh, when I approached them about hosting this play reading for mm -hmm. the two plays we're producing this season, they said, absolutely, come. And a number of our guests had did not know it was there. so. We are helping one another. This is a great example of sisters helping sisters to rise. That's right. All right and speaking of yeah. rising, you're going to be rising in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Because we're going to be going to a PSA in a few seconds. And after we come out, these two artists, these two wonderful women, these two artists, two women, we're going to explain your, you know, what you got to, what you got to say, okay. and how you say it, and right. how you're healing and reaching people. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank so you. we're going to go to a PSA for the cause. And as I said, when we come back on the other side of mental health and you, we're going to have a treat for you. Thank you. Stay tuned. Congratulations, Bronx Net, on your 30th anniversary. Bronx Best is my show, and I had a great experience being able to bring my story to the Bronx Network. Um, it's a change, really changed my life. And I look forward to growing with the network, and um, I think that uh, it's a wonderful place to grow and learn. And I think that everyone should take advantage of all the wonderful programs and things that, that go on here. Congratulations, BronxNet. On 30 years, you started when I was born. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is Verona, the dancing reporter who Create Your World, and I thank BronxNet for being here uh, to help me produce my show.
breathe, 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 breathe. <sighs> don't act like you don't know me. I am she, your mother, your daughter, your sister, your lover. My name is Loretta, but my friends call me Retta. I am pure brick base metal. You can call me brass. I'm a complex mixture of elements, hard and durable, perfectly suited to be a pathway for life-giving stuff so others can be sustained, nourished, and mobilized, an activating change agent. I am primary source material that when properly understood and well prepared gives way to brilliance. Everywhere you look, I am there. There, my life is being tested for heat resistance by the neglect of a girl too young to be called somebody's mama, by the neglect of a girl too young to be called somebody's mama, by the neglect of the girl. Well, you get it, right? There I am being hammered, bent, broken by the mistreatment of one trusted to be trusted. There I am being my life like steel doors bolted shut by fear and regret, and at other times like cast iron gates swinging wide open on hinges oiled by forgiveness and emboldened by love. There, I'm being refined by opportunities that made a way out of poverty, out of miserable little spaces too small for my dreams. Smelting, soldering, hammering, and breaking are all a part of the creative process. Base metals become precious in time through refinement. I'm made of formidable material, crisp flint, slate silver, fiery copper, brilliant platinum, iridescent gold, statuesque bronze, all materials used to memorialize queens, mamas, matriarchs, sisters, soldiers, long since gone but soon coming back their beauty reflected in the eyes of this new generation of women. This is for them. Becoming a work of art is arduous, painful, messy, but so worth the journey. Angry? I am. Sad? I am. Wounded? I am. Resilient? I am. I'm precious, honey. Like the brass candlesticks passed down the family line for six generations that every sister, auntie, cousin wants to call their own, and you only use them when company comes out. Brass. That's who I am. And don't you forget it. Out of the darkness, out of the night, has the black woman crawled to the dawn of light. A beast of burden with soul and brains. She has come through sorrow and pain and woe, and the cry of her heart is to know, to know. Black American Working Woman is a story about a woman fighting to break free of the blunt ties that bind her greatness and leave the plantation in her mind. Scene one, three black women dramatically quit their jobs, and then a crash. A man screams in pain. A policewoman investigates as a possible assailant in a white hoodie flees the scene. We pick up at the top of scene two. Welcome to Beyond Entertainment YouTube Network. At BEYT, we believe in telling the truth that entertains. Beyond Entertainment YouTube Network with your host, Rhonda Watson. Welcome, welcome to
to the next episode of BEYT Network, where we take you deep inside the issues that matter, but with an ETV kind of spin. <laughs> Keeping you informed and entertained is our business. We bring you an exciting new segment just in time for the end of Black History Month and the start of Women's History Month. It's called Go Ahead, Black Woman. <laughs> Back in the dark ages of 2020, during the worldwide pandemic, the American workplace experienced the Great Resignation. <laughs> That's when the world shut down and everyone had a chance to open up their eyes and consider how they were being treated on the job. I did some um, investigation and found that black women were the most likely to consider escaping their employ, but they couldn't afford to leave, so they sucked it up and stayed some in very toxic environments. Then came the quiet quit wave of 2021-22. That's where those who couldn't afford to leave their jobs did the bare minimums to stay employed. Now, there's little data on those numbers because basically who's gonna say, I'm gonna do the least on my job to keep a check? <laughs> but one can infer black women had low numbers in that, high numbers in that category too. So, during this time of year when American minorities are celebrated, we will feature up and coming stars who not only kept their jobs, but excelled. Go ahead, black woman. <laughs> we start with a real marketing genius from right here in the Boogie Down Bronx, Tamika L. Johnson out of Parkchester. You might not know her name, but you have definitely seen her work. Can anyone remember the chicky pie chicken sandwich craze last summer? Uh-huh, <laughs> and you thought it was just the algorithm. I told you we go deep here at BEYT. Tamika is joining us over the phone from her corner office. How you doing, Tamika? I'm sorry you couldn't be here. Spotlight on Tamika, stage right. She's wearing a white hoodie and driving her car. Rhonda, oh girl, I'm sorry too. Last minute business trip, far away from the office. A and I, I don't have a corner office, just you know, a regular office. But it's great to be featured on your show. It's a big deal nowadays to cover black history, but to cover black women's history, uh, that takes a lot of courage. Thank you, <laughs> that means a lot. But don't be humble. With all the chicky pie buzz last summer, I'm sure they got a corner office ready for you. <laughs> Cornered in the office, yeah. What'd you say? Corner office, not yet. Chicky pie, chicky pie, before the deal of chicky pie, my, my division lost our, our VP, Mr. Travis Tooley. He was one of the founders of the company I work for, PMP Media and Marketing. Mr. Tooley, he was a great man, a, a real goat. He looked out for people like me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm sure he primed you for his position, right? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. The sales and marketing division was split in two after he passed. I got the marketing division and, uh, well, I, I'm working, I'm working with the, the sales division manager, Mr. Aiken. Really? That sounds awkward. <laughs> How's that working out? Well, Mr. Aiken is a very, he's a very resourceful man. He has a very unique management style, but a car horn is heard and the driver passing says, get out the way, you dumb bee! A police car passes. Tamika says, let me get out the way of this police. What was I saying? Tamika quickly takes off the white hoodie. Whoa, sounds like you're rushing to your next client. I have a few more questions. It sounds like you and Mr. Aiken are up for the same position. Is that right? Girl, you bet not let him take your spot. <laughs> That's not really my call. I, I just tried to do what my mom taught me. Put my head down, do the work, and stay quiet. Well, you putting in the work for Cheeky Pie. Tell us, Tamika, about how all that happened. Yes, Cheeky Pie. Well, when the folks from Cheeky Pie first came to PMP, they got an icy reception because they from the hood, right? Well, it wasn't very warm. Basically, because nobody from PMP heard of it before. So I went to check it out. Now, I heard of Cheeky Pie, but I never went to the spot. So I go up on Gun Hill and Boston Road, and I find a real small spot that maybe three people can fit in. I go there on a Tuesday around 11.30 in the morning, and I see a line out the door at least 40 people deep, <laughs> like somebody's big mama was cooking in the back or something. 
girl, I made sure to get on that line and not move because you know how we do. Once you get off the line, you forfeit your place on the line. Well, a lady got off the line, and when she tried to get back on, people started saying, back of the line, back of the line, back of the line. <laughs> but the lady, she said, I need to get my spot online to get my chicken sandwich before they run out. And a small riot erupted. Now, Miss Dubois is the owner. She's a big, tall black woman with broad shoulders and an afro to match, <laughs> looking like she's a leader in the Black Panthers or something. She came out the back with a bat in her hand and said in a thick Louisiana accent, we shan't like other establishments. We do our best to inform our customers that there be a shortage. So check our app, hold your peace, and remain at rest. You gon' get your sandwich. They got an app? <laughs> yeah, girl, they got an app. <laughs> when she said that, Miss Dubois, when she said that, everybody got back online with a quickness, and everybody left with a chicken sandwich in their hand and a smile on their face. <clears throat> now that's what's up. <laughs> Tell us, let's go deeper, Tamika. Tell us why you got started in marketing. Okay. <laughs> well, in college, I started a small business development firm with my best friend. It was the best time of my life. I did all the marketing and, and fell in love with the, <laughs> with the process of turning dimes into dollars. We had good success for a while, but then business slowed and my mom got sick and I had to get a job, you know, for the health care. Would you ever go back to owning a business, you know, be an entrepreneur again? Maybe, one day. But being in corporate America has taught me how to have tenacity and strategy and most of all, the emotional fortitude to succeed. You just have to know how to read the room. No one to leave it. That reminds me of a show that used to come on cable TV, the Melissa Harris Perry show. Do you remember? It was really popping during the Obama years. On one of her last shows to air, her right-wing guest was talking about how black people have the same advantages as all Americans. But Melissa was trying to explain that black people have no real resources outside of their paycheck. But the guest, uh, a lobbyist from Washington, I think, kept interrupting her. Now, Melissa always kept it real, always kept it professional, but the, that lobbyist kept interrupting her. And I could tell Melissa was losing it because her voice was getting louder and louder until she said, no net. Black people have no net. I think she was fired shortly after that. Maybe she knew she was getting fired and told the truth. Maybe she told the truth so she could live it. Huh, think of that. Wow, I want to thank, I want to thank uh, Car Carol, Carolyn, and I want to thank Paula for those really wonderful, wonderful. And you know, if it's possible, can I bring my two guests back to the, because uh, we got a few minutes. We got, we got a few minutes, I've been told, by the powers that be, Excellent. you know. I want to thank you, ladies. Thank you uh, for that. Thank you. Thank what you does it Cynthia. feel to be up there doing that? Does it feel? It's extremely empowering. Uh, it honors the ancestors, mm -hmm. bringing forth uh, truth, yes. their truth, right. um, and dis destroying the limitations that they lived beneath. We're, we're able to raise our voices today because they were here, and so we're creating more space for others to do the same. Now I wanted to ask you, like, who's coming? Who's, who's being impacted? What's your audience looking like? Yeah, so uh, we're focused on primarily women of color mm -hmm. uh, between 30 and 70, mm -hmm. uh, and these are people who have put aside their desire to create because of the pressing needs of the family. Right. Uh, Paula and I represent women who have put in the work, we've worked for other people, and now we're doing the work that is most life-giving. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the women, the people that we want to encourage to say, hey, there's space for you here. Every one of you has a story worth telling. Yeah. 
and we want to tell them it's time to tell it. Yes, those stories worth telling, ladies. That's right. I remember the, the GRIO being so important in our community. That's right. Those yeah. stories tell us. Those storytellers, those stories we used to hear our maybe our grandparents talk about. That's right. Those those our aunties talk about. Yes. That's right. Those cousins, those church, you know, the church ladies. That's right. You know, growing up in the church as I did in the Methodist church, I remember my 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 grandmother and my aunties, mm -hmm. and my mother and my grand um, my, yeah my cousins. We were all deaconesses mm -hmm. in the Methodist church, mm -hmm. and just the stories that was being told there in their actions, mm -hmm. how they was they dressed a certain way, they mm -hmm. looked a certain mm -hmm. way. They made court held during the course of the week. That's but right. when they walked into that church, that's right. when they walked that's and right. did their jobs, that's right. that they walked and did the things that they were being called to do, mm -hmm. that was a story being told mm -hmm. about beauty Say and that. resiliency. That's, that's right. right. You know, that's so right. I remember, you know, as we start to wrap up, and I want to thank you. First, where can we find you? You can find me at goodlightproductions.com. Okay. All of our season is there. Um, all of the tickets to see the plays that we're producing, Black American Working Women, The Danger of Hope, Precious Metals, yeah. uh, in partnership with Goddard Riverside, will go up for the women, the WAM Festival, Women okay. in the Arts, awesome. Awesome. next month. So. Okay, I think we have something yes. for, for stories for those in the, <laughs> you can see it, yes, the mm -hmm. WAM Festival, mm -hmm. but you think we all find this information online. Goodlightproductions.com. Goodlightproductions. And what about you, Ms. Paula? Where sure. can they find you? Yeah, they can find me um, on social media at Paula Ralph. Burkett, B I R K E T T. Okay, Mr. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Ralph Burkett. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm on social media. Um, and, you know, I'd love to actually uh, take these take these stories into spaces where, really quick, take these stories into spaces where people are afraid to tell their history, where where young people are afraid to know their history. I think it's mm -hmm. important that these stories are told so that history does not repeat itself. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so if people are interested, you know, get in touch with PaulaRalphBurkett.com because I'm really interested in, in spreading the word. Mm -hmm. As I said, there's stories, our, our, our community is full of stories. Yes, that's right. And it's when you know your history, you are more, you are stronger in order you're, you're more resilient and stronger. That's so right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> Again, I want to thank these two ladies for being part of this great experience of mental health and you. I want to thank Bronx Neck for giving us this platform, and I want to thank you. Now, what stories do you got to tell? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because you're not alone. That's right. We're here for you, and we always will be. From me to you, thank you, beloved. <laughs> thank you for being part of this great experience. For Mental Health and You, I'm your host, Cynthia Timms. Now go tell your story. See you next time.